But unfortunately, it'll never happen. Crunch! Punches! And punches! And it's over! I think it's gonna be over. Aguero in big trouble against the ropes! I have to say, there seems an element of genuine hate between these two, Ambrose. For sure. I don't hate the man. Just imagine if you bought a ticket. Stop it, Frank. You can stop it any time. Castillo's in trouble. Leak steps in. And the fight is over. Oh! Welcome back to the Legendary Nights After Show with me, your host, Sean, joined by my compatriot, my co-host, Johnston. You're coming on the After Show, stepping in for Lukey, who is unable to facilitate this particular After Show due to flight delays, unfortunately, and he's, he's absolutely gutted that he wasn't able to facilitate the After Show. But, Johnston, it's great that we actually have the opportunity to do this together for a change in the sense that we actually are able to have a real good chat freely about the Zale Gratiano trilogy and our thoughts and feelings. Now, in the actual episode itself that we've that we've done and everyone's been listening to, you know, we, we do get to tell a little bit of how we feel about this, but it's great really looking back on it now since it's been recorded and, and it's out there that we can actually properly reflect on what we've done, what we've presented to people, how we feel about it, how we feel about the trilogy and both fighters. So, you know, I'm going to hand this over to you and let you start this off on the after show and just talk about that particular trilogy and these two fighters and your initial thoughts when putting this episode together. Well, I'm going to try and tap into my inner Lukey, to be honest with you. I'll try and go a bit... Um think outside the box if you like if possible um but Luke does give some great insight in into the stuff we produce and that this is a fantastic trilogy it really is it's one of the greatest trilogies in boxing history and it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to try and bring these fights to life you know there is no footage on that first fight there's limited footage on the second even on the third you can jump onto YouTube and you can see them discussing the fights, etc. But the third fight tends to be the one that gets a lot more sort of uh, status, if you like, spoken about a lot more, obviously, because of the fact there's lack of footage. But as a whole, I thought the story was compelling. I enjoyed the way Rocky Graziano had such a shit start in his life and then it turned around for him and how Zhao was the, the really nice guy, you know, religious guy comes through boxing from very early doors a fantastic amateur career learns a great style with with the body shot and then the right to the head a signature shot for Zal but the whole story itself I mean it was brilliant and there's it well, all it did was Sean for, for me and I know for you personally was it made us want to do career profiles on a pair of them because they've both got very fascinating background stories as well as what they do when they move into that squared circle yeah, absolutely, and this is what we enjoy the most about putting these episodes together, especially the historical episodes like this. I mean, these fights took place in the aftermath of the, the Second World War, you know, at a time way before us, and we can only imagine what life was like then because we've never had to live through that type of adversity or hardship. So to put that into context about how their lives were individually was something that I really enjoyed going through and, and presenting in the story because, you know, we get to educate ourselves in the process. And I think that's one thing that we need to make, you know, really prominent when we talk about it is that these stories, these fighters that are involved in these stories, it's not like we're complete historians with all this knowledge locked away up in our brains because it's not we learn about these fighters we we get engrossed in wanting to know who these people are how they lived and and, and what adversity they overcame what was so good about him what was so bad about him and that's what i absolutely enjoy thoroughly about doing the stories is because we get to learn so much about history so much more about the sport that we didn't already know and and to be honest i was chatting to one of my friends recently and he's talking about the current boxing scene at the moment and he's like you know is there anything that really appeals to you at the moment with the current boxing scene is like 
No. And I said to him, no. I said, I actually enjoy sitting down and learning more about the history of the sport and how different things were. Yes, some things were, were worse then and there are better now. However, I still feel like we can learn so much from people that have come before us, the stories that have come before us, the characters that have come. And I think history does teach us a lot of lessons. And I think that's why we enjoy it so much, is learning about the origins of the sport, the origins of some of these fighters, how some of these fighters have then inspired generations of fighters after them. And it's been a great episode to cover because these were two fighters that I genuinely didn't really know much about. I knew a little bit about Rocky Graziano, and I'd heard about Tony Zale. But being totally honest with you, like I said earlier, you know, we're not full on historians where we know everything off the top of our heads and we can just label them off to you. We learn about this along the way and we enjoy doing it. So it was great to hear the stories, as you rightly pointed out, about how Zale was so clean cut and he came through a traditional way, whereas Rocky Graziano was just his tear away. He was just hard work. He was probably hard to be around, but yet he turned his life around so much to the point where he becomes a middleweight champion. Something that, when you hear the story initially, you think, that's never going to happen. No, it, it didn't seem that way. I mean, the altercation he has with one of the soldiers, uh, yeah, he has a great a, a description of, or he tells someone of the description where he um, he ends up hitting the guy where he thinks he's reaching for the telephone. And, and that was his just persona, his angry, he was this angry side to him. You know, he was a, he was a street brawler. He enjoyed a, a street tough, as they call him back in the old days. You know, he loved to rock about with his boys and, and just knock people out for fun. I mean, there was so many other stories, like even from Custy Amato, when um, he picks him up and how, 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 you know, how that affected Cuss as well. Cuss really wanted Rocky. And then it was the mafia that pretty much came in or the, the gangsters around at the time that swooped up Rocky and offered him some money and um his career went from there obviously went back inside and then he had that change of heart but the one thing that i i did get from uh you know with, with the information we sourced from you know some great books as well uh, which we'll mention at the end of this show but you know the fact that uh, what he used to do where rocky would um he would hold his hands in his pocket or down by his side and look down and and when the guy he was sort of sizing up didn't think anything of it that's when he would throw a right hook <laughs> and knock the fella out there, there's so much more to rocky um this this terrible side to him really you know anything he robbed whatever he you know he robbed anything a wasn't it a whatever it was a piece of jewelry <laughs> yeah. that that was that was his life you know that was that was his background that was his upbringing you know he he had didn't really have any direction compared to someone like Zhao who had you know a loving family and, and the, the other thing is that uh, we also didn't quite go into what was the fact that Zhao's wife Adele she um, clearly was suffering with um, postnatal depression um, after having their children and she really struggled and she also got abused as a child there was some more information in there with that which we didn't really delve into because we want to hold some of this information back for the hope of doing a career profile on Tony Zhao at some point but her life was difficult as well. Um, but just the way they matched up. And Rocky's rise, Sean. How quick did he rise? That year, or a few years, three years, that Zal was in sort of in World War II, helping out the rookies and, and refusing to take on some of the younger guys that wanted to really face him because he was too worried he would hurt them. And he didn't want to back out of any of his big shots. I think one guy he took away, didn't he? One fella got, got a bit <laughs> shirty with him and he got rid of him. But other than that, he uh, refused to take on the younger kids. He he taught them well in combat. But while that was happening, Rocky Graziano was on this magnificent rise. And then as he comes out of the army, it find, you find out that Rocky and Zhao were fighting for the middleweight title when everyone wanted it. It was amazing. Yeah, it was. And and that's what's the beauty of this, this story is it is a tale of two different guys who are on completely different paths in life. And I think one of the other things we took away from this episode was that Rocky Gattiano had all these issues with affiliations with the mob and the issues with the bribes and not reporting the bribes. And as a result of that, you know, them taking his license away from him and stopping him from boxing. And, you know, we kind of felt sorry for him at, at that point because it was like how many times at that point 
in boxing was the mob doing this with people like because he had this duty he was told he had a duty of care to report all this and and his sort of response was yeah but how many times you know does this happen in the sport and it doesn't get reported but yet he's made an example of at that point it was sad that that happened to him i felt i mean people might have their own interpretation of it they might see it as actually yeah, I mean, I know you feel the same. I think people, other people might not. Other people might think, well, at the end of the day, he, sh- you know, he shouldn't have been having this conversation with this this person in question, and he should he should have reported it. But this is a different different life, different periods of time, different things are are, are socially acceptable as as, the, as they were then, and not how they are now. So life was just completely different. And for us who have not lived through it, and you know, let's be honest, there's not many people still alive on the planet that can remember exactly what that was like at that time you know either they, they're quite young or they're well into their their 70s or even 80s at the moment and, and possibly struggling with alzheimer's or dementia so you know there's not a lot of people around at the moment that can really recount what that time period was like to live through especially in where rocky graciano was living and, and the way the mob had that stronghold over boxing and what it was like to be around the gangs and his affiliations and the feeling of not being able to disassociate yourself with them through fear of being hurt. So there was so, so much going on with Rocky that, yeah, we did feel quite sorry for him for for the large part, but it was hard, this story for me, because, you know, a lot of the stories that we do, there's always a good guy. And there's usually a bad guy somewhere along the line. There's there's usually this sort of equilibrium between these these tales. In this instance, I honestly felt like even though Graciano had his his troubles, I still felt like deep down and looking at the aftermath of the fight and what it meant and, and how these two ended up becoming good friends later on down the line. It felt like he was just a good guy who didn't have the right guidance when he was younger and Zale just had that loving family that supportive family he had his religion he had everything he needed and he was just always a clean cut good guy so it wasn't like really two it was two guys and two different paths but it wasn't totally for me like a good guy versus a bad guy it was kind of like two guys that came from different walks of life that just had good hearts and it was just about how they were guided as they grew up and then when they come together you get to really see how good of a guy Graziano really is and you just get reaffirmed of how good a guy Zale is and how we already knew how good of a guy he is so I really enjoyed the the the, the whole tale and the sportsmanship was was really good to hear about as well between them it wasn't like you know Tony Zale wins the first fight Rocky Graziano wins the second Tony Zale wins the third and there's all this hatred and bad blood in the aftermath of it these two guys just were just full-on sportsmen who had total respect for each other they did they really did um absolute respect and and the fact that the first and the second were basically carbon copies but the opposite where you had rocky graziano sort of dominating that first fight for Rizal to then land the shot that eventually puts rocky down and then to have that description from rocky graziano of how he felt with that shot and next thing you knew it was 10 seconds and how dazed he was and then the other way it was Zao that was in control of that second fight and the rematch, and then it was Rocky that landed the shot. So it was weird how that worked out. But, you know, just in general, as you say, there was no animosity between the pair. They were very professional in what they did. Um, obviously, the um, the second and the third fight came into uh, a, an issue because of the fact that Graziano didn't mention the fact that he was getting offered bribes. And, and as you said, you know, there was many, many fighters that were offered bribes throughout this era. I- insane amount of fighters. So obviously the New York State got involved and they were the biggest commission around at the time, which you find, isn't it? Every time we do these ones, Sean, the New York State Athletic Commission is always the one that sort of sits on their high horse and they're the powerful ones. They were like the governing bodies as they are today. And, you know, if they strip someone of a license, then... You know, it was difficult for them to get a big fight, but they still managed to get this fight on because everybody wanted to see it. And um, and it was immense. I mean, from the fact we can't necessarily get the the right footage, look, I think that the, the uh, descriptions of the fights, I thought, were nailed on. I, I honestly believe that, and I feel that um, we, we brought them to life, and, and I hope the listeners feel the same. 
Yeah, I think that's another thing to sort of add to this is that, yeah, there is only limited fight footage available, but from what you can see of the limited fight footage, you can tell that that they were great fights. And the descriptions are fantastic. And I suppose it, it takes a little bit of imagination from yourself as an individual to be able to envisage how this went down based on the limited fight footage plus the descriptions which we were able to source for the fights. And because they were so accurate from people that were there at ringside and you put that together with the footage, you can kind of envisage how the whole fight goes and, and the moves that were being made in the ring and... You've got to have a little bit of imagination to be able to thoroughly engross yourself in it. And if you haven't really got that, then you are going to struggle to to really relate to this trilogy and these fights and, and this story. But I think for the most part, people that listen to us, you guys that enjoy our episodes, I think you you understand like where we're trying to go and, and the pictures we're trying to paint so you can understand how good of trilogies these were or how good of fights these were. Because it's a shame that some of these fights are not available in their full and entirety due to the fact that they, you know, they, they were recorded or they weren't recorded properly or the footage is available but someone's got a hold on it and never released it, whatever it may be. You know, it, it's all about using that sort of imagination and using that limited footage that is available to create that picture in your mind of how things went down. And I think that's one thing I'm, I'm really proud that we did for this episode was that, you know, we was able to paint a really good picture for people that could really enjoy and engross themselves within it and actually look back at it and go, do you know what? I've learned so much from this episode because that's how we feel. That's how we feel, isn't yeah, it? When we walk it away from these episodes and we finish recording them and then I sit back and edit them and I listen to them and I think, you know what? This is brilliant. And yes, we are blowing our trumpet just a little bit, but I think because of how many people have contacted us and said they really enjoy the detail we put into it, the research is thorough and accurate and, you know, it, it's people that are listening and picking up on every little detail that's going into these episodes that are appreciating it. So I think, you know, sometimes we do need to give ourselves that little pat on the back and that little bit of credit for the work that does go into it because it isn't just a throw together episode like originally when we did the legendary night series they were quite throw together you know admittedly these were just fights that we enjoyed off our own memories there wasn't a lot of research and factual information like there is now so this is the hope that we have for all our series when we've put them together going forward we've increased the the the, the sound quality we've improved the artwork we've improved all the professionalism of how we do things and we hope that it has paid off when you've listened to tales like zale versus graziano and like the moras and the forums and the tysons and the brunos of the season i hope that has really come across in that way because i know i've had quite a few messages recently that have that have given me that interpretation that people listening that haven't messaged uh, are enjoying it like you know you usually hear if you've done a bad job you usually hear more if you've done a bad job than you have a good job and i think yeah. it's, it's good to get their messages through so thank you obviously for everybody that does take the time out to to write to us on youtube or insta or facebook or even just sort of direct messages on twitter whatever it is it's massively appreciated because then we truly know that people are actually getting the benefit of the research, the hours put into it, the editing, the way the episodes are structured and put together. And, and that's why we were very proud of what we put together. But this tale, going back off onto it, for me, this this was a tale that I wasn't sure when putting our episode list together how this would play out. Because obviously we're catering to different audiences of boxing fans. Some of them are hardcore, some of them are, are quite new to the sport or just watch the big fights, what, what people call casual watchers of the sport, you know, people like that. But it's it's good when we get people that come along and are able to, to, to look at this and go, do you know what, actually I've learned so much from it. But for us, when we're putting them together, sometimes there's a bit of haste in terms of will this be something that people will enjoy will they really want to hear about two fighters from the 1940s well the answer is yes because people have enjoyed this episode and we hope you've enjoyed listening to that tale and please as always when we say give us some feedback 
even if it's just a little message to say, do you know what? We enjoyed this episode. Just something as small as that, it really does go a long way for us because then we know that we're doing a, a good job in what we're doing and the way we've put things together is the way people want to consume it. So I suppose I'm just going to come to come to a head of this little after show that we've done and just pass this over to you to give sort of final words now, Johnston, on your overall thoughts and feelings and opinions and a summary of the tale of Zale and Graziano. Well, first and foremost, I've got to say that, um, you know, a huge thanks goes out to every Obviously, the authors of the two books we used in particular, which was uh, from Jeffrey Sussman, uh, Rocky Graziano, Vist's Fame and Fortune, which was uh, tremendously written. And I think for me, uh, the best source was the Tony Zhao, The Man of Steel, which was actually written by Fad Zhao and Clay Moyle. Um, some fantastic information in that. And that is where we got the fight footage from. And we would highly recommend that you do go and pick up these books and read them because they're tremendous books. They've got so much information on both fighters. So we have obviously taken the information from those books and we've presented to you an episode that we believe was perfect for these two guys. And just the journey they had, the separate journeys, and it almost was like they were never, ever going to meet. And and almost when I think of Rocky Graziano, it almost felt like the pages were thrown at Reuben Carter to me. It almost felt like it was going to be a Reuben Carter situation. Difference was, Rocky Graziano was a white guy. And I think that is a difference with Reuben Carter. I know it was a few years on, obviously, uh, from this, 20 years on, 25 years on, but it was he was very much the same. There's no difference, really, between Rocky Graziano and Reuben Carter from the very moments that they start out in their lives. It's just different how the circumstances change and how a time in, in jail changed Graziano and he was able to pick himself up and uh, move on and have a successful career in boxing. But um, just in general, great books. I think we've sourced the information well. We've put a great episode together. And, and yeah, I mean, they are very historic. Uh, but I believe that we've brought them to the future, Sean. I think that people, if they didn't already know about Rocky and they certainly didn't know too much about Zhao, then um, I'm, I'm sure you do now and you probably want to learn a little bit more about them. So pick up their books, have a read. And I'm sure in a few months' time, we'll have a career profile on both, if not one of them at least. Absolutely. Career profile is something we always think about when putting these tales together. We think about fighters that we've not covered before, fighters that we want to cover, stories that we get bits of where we think, you know what, we know there's there's more to the meat on this, there's more meat on this particular bone in, in, in these fighters. And I think that's why we, we, we love doing the career profile series as well, because what we don't throw into these episodes, we always hold back and like you say, we save them because we know know that if we do a career profile there'll be many other stories that rather than trying to cram them into this legendary nights it's more appropriate to do a, a career profile and, and really highlight the life and times of these individual fighters and tell you all these other stories that we've not already covered off which is why we do a lot of signposting during the episodes when we say go and listen to this or go and listen to that that's exactly why we do it because we want you to get like the full complete package so if you're listening to one particular fighter the chances are we'll have done something on them somewhere down the line on one of our podcasts so yeah that, that, that is exactly why we don't put every single story in because we like to save them for other episodes but i've enjoyed it johnson i've enjoyed doing the after show with you for the tale of zale and graziano i hope everybody listening has enjoyed the after show and the episode please do let us know what you think about the main show and of course this after show do you like it do you like the value it brings our personal thoughts feelings and opinions is it not of any value to you please do let us know that as well because it is also interesting to know whether these episodes are being consumed and if you do really like them or not uh, so i'm going to take the last minute or two of the show just to give a big thanks to, to the many people involved first of all i'd like to give a thanks to everybody listening thank you for supporting us and supporting the legendary nights podcast secondly i'd like to give big thanks to the patrons of the btr boxing podcast network it's a pleasure having these patrons on board because they are supporting us you guys are supporting us to be able to put together episodes like this it doesn't come free trying to get the source material it's not easy to get this source material 
a lot of the time we have to go out and buy the source material to be able to put the episodes together. So without your support, you know, it would be a bit of a struggle. We'd be out of pocket quite a lot by now as well um, if we were doing this ourselves. So it's a bit, it's a big help. So thank you to every single patron that has been on board with us and has come on board with us recently. We really appreciate you. Finally, if you've not subscribed to the Legendary Knights podcast, please make sure you do on its own feed. You can find us on Twitter at Legend Knight Pod. You can find the BTR Boxing Podcast Facebook page on there. You can find the Instagram page. If you're watching slash listening via the YouTube channel, make sure you leave a comment in the box below of the episode to let us know what you think. And if you've not subscribed to YouTube, make sure you do it. We're very close to a thousand subscribers, just a few more, and we will get to that promised land of the partner program. Come on, get us get us in there. And that that is it. That is it for this episode, Fight Fans. Thank you so much for listening, as always, and we'll see you on the next after show.